And uh, the final question we have is from Susie. Is there a question that you've always wanted to be asked and had the chance to elaborate on, but no one has asked you yet? Yeah, so for me, that uh, that question would be, you know, I'm always, I've, I've been surprised that we haven't dug into it deeper because I've seen people commenting on, on the videos and such uh, from Stranger, which is the Glock, the guy and Secto. And who are they? Who are they in the, let's call it genetic, genetically related family of the Gluckens? And where are they on the pecking order? And then how how would we have liked to shown them if we had infinite amounts of money and time and <laughs> production resources but there was a there was something that i really wanted to show with them and and just to solidify it you know from the get-go here the glock the guy are higher higher on the gluckin uh genetic tree so if we look back you know the gluckins are kind of like homo erectus but the glock the guy are like what would come next, you know, after Homo sapien, what would come next? And with the Gluckins in their initial design, part of the reason they were walking on their hands was it was like, because they, they never actually used them, right? Like they never, they, they never lifted a finger. So they didn't need arms. They always had someone else to boss around that would do those things. And so if you look at it kind of in a Darwinian way, you'd say, okay, how would, if a thousand years ago or, or, you know, hundreds of thousands of years ago, Gluckins were behaving a certain way. We're in, in different places in the world where environment would have a difference on their environment, on their evolution. The more powerful they would become, the, the less useful their limbs were. But they were parasitic in nature. And so that's where the, the Glockta guy just sort of emerged more with these uh, tentacles where their limbs sort of became tentacles over time. And they became true parasites where they would take over whoever they want. And that would then, they'd be, you know, you, like in the case of Secto, we thought he was one thing every time we saw him in Stranger's Wrath in a cinematic or building up his story. But not until the very ending scene, do you, in a sequence on the good ending, do you find out that he was not at all what he appeared to be. And what was fun about the idea of the Glock, the guy, and you go, if these are a, like parasites in a real world, you know, we have, a wide <laughs> myriad of terrifying looking parasites that are probably <laughs> living on us in this moment, depending on how powerful microscope we have to see them. Right. But most parasites uh, of the blood sucking variety. So we'd say mosquitoes, um, uh, vampire bats, uh, various types of pe uh, you know, parasites and tapeworms and all kinds of th stuff are just, you know, looking to get at that blood. And so, you were saying, well, what if that was civilized species and they were still had exuded that behavior? How would that become, and in my mind, kind of a, a Baron Harkonnen type of existence for the subjugates, you know, of that society? And so you could imagine a, I always wanted to, to see and hope to be able to, you know, show someday is the Glock, the guy in like a bathhouse in the sort of Yakuza or, or, or Russian tradition where gangsters hang out in bathhouses and it's secret and it's hard to have microphones and it's steamy and it's, you know, and we go back and the Greeks were doing it and the Romans were doing it. You know, it's usually just, um, a wealthy retreat of spa therapy, but imagine actual blood baths where gangs of these uh, or, or clans or, or business uh, cartels of Glock the guy would come together. And normally how you shed your, your uh, clothes in the locker room, they would leave behind the bare body of the thing they were parasiting of the mm -hmm. <laughs> poor soul that they were terrified parasiting. So you'd see these hangers in like freezer lockers of keeping their bodies, you know, still on, on ice and, and sustainable while they're in there doing business in their real form, which is a bunch of octagai like power, power mongers doing their daily de dirty dealings in the opulence of, of bloodbath steam rooms. You know, like I just think that would be a great scene <laughs> smoking cigars and <laughs> talking ruthless strategies and, you know, things like that, subjugating the poor. Um, it would just be, I, I would just, I would love to see a scene like that, even if we weren't making it. Yeah. 
make for an amazing cinematic, that is for sure. I think so. Which you are known for uh, w within these uh, series of games.